Okay, we're going to go ahead and begin with another video of the Code Zonk series where we're teaching kids how to code. Of course, we are pretty laser focused these days on code combat. So let's go ahead and play and let's get started by picking up where we last left off. Now, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I clarified because in my last video I said, well, hey, maybe I could just jump around and check out some of these other worlds out of sequence, but you can't do that. You have to get through first the Kithgard dungeon. Uh, before you can unlock all of the other things that you've got going on over here, uh, which is understandable because it's probably uh, pretty specific to your, uh, uh, your level and the things that you're learning as you move along. If you look at some of these topics that they cover, though, they're pretty interesting. So in the Blackwoods Forest, which is the next thing that I'm imagining, that's the next thing that we can uh, access, you've got if-else statements, so you've got conditional logic and, and things like flow control, relational operators, so it becomes a lot more advanced as you, as you progress. But this is where we are right now, and this is all that we've got access to, so we'll go ahead and press play on that. And we'll go ahead and accept the advice of the big yellow arrow, and we'll start where they're suggesting that we start. Okay, we're going to be encountering uh, basic syntax and loops again, so this is going to be very familiar. This is pretty much what we were working with the last time we left off. We're going to equip what they suggest that we equip, and then we'll press the play button. Code combat. Alright, so we get a bonus if it's under five statements. That, of course, means that we're probably going to be using loops again. Let's go ahead and press start and begin. I do see that we have a repeatable pattern here, right? We've got... Uh, let's back this up so we can see it. We've got uh, moving right twice and moving down once. Moving right twice, moving down once, and moving right twice. Okay, only this time in our code editor we don't have them helping us with the loop. We don't have a little uh, sample code that we can that we can borrow from, which is fine because we've used it enough in our last video that I think we have a pretty good idea of what we need to do. Let's try it. So we're going to move right. We'll make sure that we use the argument of two. So we're going to move right twice and then we're going to move down one time. That's all we need to do in our loop. If you count, starting on line two, we have one then line three is two, and then line four is three lines of code. So I think we've got a pretty tight uh, piece of source code here. Let's run it and see if it works. We move right twice, we move down once, then we start the loop over again. We move right twice, move down once, and then we move right twice. Of course, you can't move down after that, but that's okay because we've come to the end. We've gotten our gem. We've come to the end of the, the maze and we're good to go. So that was under five statements. We had no code issues, so we should get a bonus when we click done. Of course, we had that victory that we were expecting. We got our experience points and our gems, and of course, all of the experience and gems that come with our bonuses as well. So we are in good shape. Let's go ahead and press that continue button and see what faces us now. It's recommending that we go here at this point. This is the second kith maze, as they say. We're using basic syntax and loops here again. Many have tried, but few have found their way through this maze. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound easy. It doesn't look like we have anything that we need to do to our character. We'll just go ahead and press that play button. Let's see what we face. We get a bonus, by the way, if we're under six statements. Let's hope we remember that one. All right, there's our gem. We got a bunch of gems, it looks like. Let's go ahead and... Let's zoom out a little bit and see. Okay, we're zoomed out about as much as we need to. So it's right away advising us that we're going to need to use a loop to get through this. So that's fine. Let's back this up a little bit and let's see. So we know, I mean, you can tell just by looking at the maze that you've got a repeatable pattern here. So it's how do you represent that, that repeatable pattern in a loop? That's what we need to be looking at. So this is our starting point here. Obviously, the only thing that we can do is move right once. So we move right, then up then right, and then down. That gets us to this point where we do the same thing, which is right, up, right, and down. So let's do this. Let's start our loop, and we'll move right once, we'll move up once, we will move right once, and then we'll move down once. And that's really it. Let's go ahead and run this and see if that's going to get us to what we need. Right up, right, down that ends the loop and then starts it over so we're moving right and then up and then right and then down again so that concludes the loop starts it over right and then up right and then down and then we are done we were successful 
And the nice thing is, is we did it under six statements. So we've got the loop, which is the first one. And then we've got these four statements here, which brings us to a total of five. So we are under six, which means we qualify, qualify rather for our bonus. We'll click done and see. We were victorious, of course. Give me those experience points. Give me those gems. Hey, look, I got a faux fur hat too. I'm sure that's useful. Got our experience points and our gems for reaching our bonuses. That means that we can go ahead and continue. And now we move on to Dread Door, it says. Dread Door. Let's see what that is. So we've got a uh, Dread Door, and behind the Dread Door lies a chest full of riches. That sounds pretty good. We're going to be using basic syntax here. We'll be using loops and strings. So the last time that we used strings was in a previous video, and we used a string when we were using the attack command because the string represented the name of the bad guy that we were attacking. So I'm not sure how we're going to use it here, but it might be something similar. Let's press play and see what we've got. Looks like we can go ahead and equip our new faux fur hat. It looks like it actually grants us a little bit of extra health. That's cool. Now that we got our awesome looking hat on, let's press play. Code combat. All right, so it's saying that we get a bonus if we keep it under four statements. So that might be tricky. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And I'm going to zoom out because I don't know I don't know what we face here. Let's see what we got. Can I zoom out? I can't. Jeez. Oh, I see. We're not moving anywhere. We've just got this door. Okay. It will take many hits, it says, to break the door. So we're just going to use a loop. That sounds interesting. So then why don't we go ahead then and attack... And the enemy that we're going to attack in this particular case is door. So if you look back over here and you look at the door, the door has that label over it with the blue writing, capital D, O O R. And then in our code, we're specifying capital D, O O R as the target of our attack. All we're doing here is we're saying just attack on a loop. So we just attack, attack, attack. We don't stop. We just beat this door down until it breaks and we get the riches. Super, super simple. I think this is going to work right away. I'll click the run button and we'll see. Look at that. We destroyed the door. We had no code issues. We kept it well under four statements. So we were successful. I think we met our bonus goals as well. Let's go ahead and grab our experience. Of course, get our gems. And because we made our bonuses, we get experience and gems there as well. So that was really simple. I suspect going forward it's not going to be as simple. It's probably going to get a little bit more challenging. Let's press that continue button and see. So the next move is over here in a place called Known Enemy. Uh-oh. We're going to be encountering enemies. So this time we're using basic syntax and strings, just like the last time. So we might be using the attack command again. Only this time we're using variables. So this is going to be our first variable. And this will be something that's going to be critical to achieving our victory. Let's press play and see what we have to face. It doesn't look like we have to do anything to our character, so I'll press that play button again. Looks like we got three guys in here that we need to kill. So our goals are to survive, kill the three bad guys, keep our code clean. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, so right away they start, they start attacking me. I'm gonna die here because I wasn't expecting all this, so here's what we need to do. Let me stop that. Let me bring this back a little bit. All right? So if you take a look here, you see we've got three guys. These are bad guys. And uh, it's making use of variables to actually set the bad guy names. So before, when we would use the attack command, let's make sure we're focusing here on the, on the code window. When we would use the attack command, we would actually specify the enemy's name in quotation marks because quotation marks are what designate a string but in this particular case we're using a variable that means that the string is set to this placeholder in this case we're setting Krat to enemy 1 we're setting Gert to enemy 2 and then we're setting Ursa to enemy 3 and these all represent what are known as variables so what they do is they show us how to use those variables in the attack command instead of the string itself. Enemy1 is a variable, and that variable represents a string, which makes this valid syntax. So what we want to do to continue 
is we just want to say, well, we'll go ahead and attack enemy two. It appears that it only takes two attacks to destroy an enemy, so we will make sure that we attack enemy three. And we'll make sure that we attack enemy three two times. Let's see what that does for us. Let's try that. And he's down. So, our hero survived, we killed the three ogres, and we had clean code. Clean code, of course, I think by their definition means that we're making sure that we set our variables, and then we use those variables in our attack commands, which is exactly what we did. So we'll click the done, and we'll collect our experience and our gems. Of course, we'll get our experience and our gems for meeting our bonuses, and then we can move on. If you look down here at the bottom of my screen, it says that I've completed 20 levels, so I get some I get some recognition for that. I'm happy to take some recognition. I will click the continue button. We'll see what we face now. Looks like we're moving into a different zone. Over here is the, the cupboards of Kithgard. Let's see what we've got here. We're gonna be using basic syntax, loops and strings. Who knows what horrors lurk in the cupboards of Kithgard. Let's go find out by pressing that play button. And we've got some new items that we can equip. These are glasses, it looks like. This grants find nearest enemy. Sounds like a new command. So that you can target ogres who don't display their names. That is, that is going to be helpful. Let's go ahead and press play and see what it takes to use that. That sounds interesting. So when we encountered enemies in the past, we always had their names kind of floating over their head. And that helped us use a string to specify in the attack command. We're not gonna have that anymore. We're gonna use a, a different command for that and let's see how that works. So it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna run on. I might have to just pause this. But basically what we've got, let's bring up our, our goal. We have to break open the cupboard. So where's the cupboard? Where is the cupboard? Here's the cupboard. So I've got this X here and in previous videos we know that we, we wanna kind of navigate over to the X. It's possible, however, that as we're moving forward over here, these guys are going to see us and they're going to attack us. So this may be something that's going to require some trial and error. Let's first do the obvious. Let's start moving our guy over to this X and just see that our suspicions are actually correct, that we see that it's likely that we might get spotted and we might start to get beat down. Let's, let's give it a try. I'm going to move up. Moving up allows me to move right. I'm gonna root I'm gonna move right two times. Move right, specify two in the argument. And let's, you know, let's not do anything other than that. Let's just kind of bring him to this point and see if in fact these guys do come after us. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There he is. He sees me. Yep, he's hitting me. And I'm down. I'm down quick, too. So Here's what we know that we've got. We've got this new method here called find nearest enemy, and it returns the closest living enemy within eyesight or no, if there aren't any. Let's see, the enemy that it returns, it looks like it's gonna return a string, although we're in Python here, so we're not using types. I don't necessarily need to worry about that, but I know that if you look at the example code here, so let's, let's get real close here to this example. If we say find nearest enemy, and we set that to a variable of enemy. We know that if it returns something, that we can then attack enemy. That actually makes a lot of sense. Let's go ahead and try that. So once we move right twice, that puts us in the line of sight of the bad guy. What we want to do is we want to say find, I'm sorry, we want to actually set a variable of enemy, and we want it to say self find nearest enemy. What that does is it sets a variable of enemy to the nearest bad guy. When we have that, we want to attack him. To kill him, we want to attack him twice. Let's try that and see what that does for us. Oh, I gotta hit him more, jeez. I gotta hit him more. Look at me thinking I can get him twice and think that's okay. I don't know what I was thinking. Let's try this. I'm going to attack him four times and see if that helps me. 
Now he's got another guy coming up right behind him. Oh. Oh, he got me. That's not good. So, that leads me to believe that my best move might be to go ahead and consult the help. Now, if you're doing this with me as well, you might want to do the same thing. You've got this little blue help button here. Go ahead and give that a click, and we'll see if that gives us some hints and tips. Okay, I clicked on the help button to get a little bit of help, and I was definitely going down the wrong path. If you clicked on it too, then you, you definitely see that I'm probably getting way, way ahead of myself. So, sometimes you have to do that because there's just some, uh, some interesting things going on in this game that you really just wouldn't know otherwise. So, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to worry about the enemies, and I'll show you why. What we're going to do is we're going to just stay focused on making sure that we get to that red X and we make sure that we bust open this cupboard. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move down twice. Then I'm going to start attacking this cupboard because at this point I'll be standing on the red X. Now what we saw before when we were actually attacking that door is that the best way to attack one of these inanimate objects that requires a lot of attacks to break is to go ahead and put that under a loop. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to go ahead and attack the cupboard under a loop. Now, your first thought might be, because it was certainly my thought, what about these bad guys? They're coming after me. What do I do about that? Well, if you just focus on the objectives of this particular mission and just do what you know that you need to do, which is to get into that cupboard, if you focus on that first, the rest of it will sometimes fall into place. And you'll get what I mean when I go ahead and run what I've got here. Let me do that now and you'll see. So it moves up, it moves right twice. The bad guys are coming after me, but I'm moving down twice. And once I get to that X, I'm just going to loop and start going after that cupboard. Now that has actually unleashed this dude who is going after these bad guys. And I don't have to worry about it. I'm just sitting there just relaxing. This guy's doing all my dirty work. And that's it. So... When you, go, when you get into some of these puzzles, like I did, you know, you may, you may come across these things and think, well, I'm going to try to be, I'm going to try to be preemptive and I'm going to see if we can prevent the things that I anticipate happening from happening, uh, just like I did. And it kind of gets you backed up into a corner and gets you a little bit lost. And you saw that the best thing to do is to click on that help button. You'll get a tutorial or a walkthrough of some sort that'll actually help you get through the level. And that's exactly what we did here. So on that note, I will go ahead and click done. I will accept my victory, although it was a bit of a challenge. I'll take those gems. I got some experience points and some additional gems for making sure that, uh, or for, for achieving some sort of a bonus. And uh, that's it. I'm good to go. I'll click on continue. And then we'll go ahead and bring it to a close there. It looks like there's plenty to do yet in this level. I'm at uh, 21 of 33. So what we'll do is we'll stop it there. And we'll probably go ahead and encounter more in videos to come. If you like what you see here, if Code Combat is something that you're really into, I would appreciate it if you'd like this video. Otherwise, check us uh, in about a week. We're going to have plenty more to do, and I will see you in the next video.